Hello! Welcome to part 2 of this video tutorial on using EBSCOhost, finding articles in full text. Okay, going back to our article. You can also click on the subjects to get a list of other articles on the same subject. If you want to read an article, check on the left side for something that says PDF full text or HTML full text. Click on it to open the full text to read it. If you don't see this here, there is another process we must follow, which I will go over later in the video. Okay, after we clicked the link for full text, we should be looking at the entire article. You can read it here in your browser, or download it to read later with this little down arrow. You can also print it with the printer icon here at the top. Don't use the one on the side if it is a PDF. That will only print HTML articles. If you print or download the article, I also recommend clicking the little envelope to email the article to yourself. This will ensure that you get all of the information you need to cite the article later, like the journal title, volume number, issue number, and DOI. If your article is not a scholarly article, it will not have a DOI. In that case, you will need a web address, also known as a URL. The one here at the top of the screen is a temporary session, so it will not work after a few hours. To get a permanent URL, you can click on the little chain link tool here to get a permalink. The permalink will pop up here where you can copy and paste it into your citation. If you need a starting place for your citation, there is a citation generator built into EBSCOhost databases. It is often incorrect though, so be ready to double check it for mistakes. To use it, click on the little yellow page here that says Cite, and it will pop up a citation in every format. Here is the APA one. This one is mostly correct except for a couple of things. The article title has a capitalization error here. The first word of the subtitle should be capitalized. Also, the volume number is 17 and the page numbers are 1 through 7, so there should be a comma and a space here. And lastly, the font is not Times New Roman, which it should be for APA. If you need a more trustworthy citation generator for your references, see my video on using CiteFast to generate citations, which I've linked in the description below. Okay, let's talk about finding the full text of articles that are only indexed in the database. Notice how some of the articles in our results have the PDF full text, but some of them only say Plum X metrics, and some don't even say anything at all. You can completely ignore the Plum X metrics part. That only tells you how popular the article is, but it will not get you the full text. Let's click on the title of one of these that doesn't have the PDF full text to see what we can do. Okay, so we can see on the left side here there is no PDF or HTML full text, which means the database wants us to know this article is here and it exists, but they don't have it available for us to read. However, it is possible that we carry this volume and issue of this journal in another database. Or perhaps it is in Google Scholar. To check our other databases quickly, click on Full Text Search on the left side. When we do this, it opens up a new tab and goes into our Find a Journal Title System. And it asks it, do we have this journal anywhere else? In this case, we have no results, so the answer is no. The next step is to check Google Scholar. Highlight and copy the article title. Then open a new tab in your browser and type in Google Scholar. Paste in the article title. Then click search. I should mention that you will always get at least one result in Google Scholar. This is because Google strives to document every single scholarly article ever published. If you click on the main link, it will often take you to the publisher's website, where they usually will charge you to read the whole article. 
although sometimes you can read it for free, so it's always worth a try. Never pay money for an article because you can get it through interlibrary loan in the worst case scenario. Sometimes in Google Scholar there is a second link on the right hand side. This is usually a good sign. It means that there may be a free version of the article out there somewhere. Let's click on the link to see. In this case it worked! We are now able to read the full article. Just keep in mind that sometimes the free version of the article is a pre-print version which may differ slightly from the final published version. If you are unable to get a free copy of the article, there is one last thing you can try to get the article. But it takes two to three business days. That's interlibrary loan. To request an article on interlibrary loan, just click the link on the left that says request through interlibrary loan. This will take you to Iliad, which is our interlibrary loan system. If you've never used interlibrary loan at CUCA College before, you will need to register for an account. Click on First Time Users underneath the login. Read through the information on the first screen, then click the button at the bottom. Fill out the form. The fields with a red asterisk are required. For the section on Loan Delivery Method, choose Mail to Address for both options if you live far away from campus. If you live near campus, choose Hold for Pickup. At the bottom, you will choose a username and password. I highly recommend that you make this the same as your normal CUCA College username and password so that you do not get confused and forget your login information. Once you have registered, you can log in. As soon as you're logged in, you can see that the request form for an article has already been filled out for you. Double check the information to make sure it is correct, then click Submit at the bottom. Within two to three business days, you should receive an email at your CUCA College email address with a link to retrieve the article under Electronically Received Articles. If you do not receive this email after three business days, write an email to ill at cuca.edu to check on the status of your request. If you're ever in a situation where you don't have enough time to wait for interlibrary loan, or if you just want to find a full text article as quickly as possible, you can click the check mark on the search results page for full text. That will make your results only show articles that have the full text available. That's it for this tutorial on using EBSCOhost finding articles in full text. I hope you will find it helpful as you do your research.